Mr. Luca Gensanti. Marat insists that I call you ambassador because you are a former ambassador uh, of Italy. Uh, but since already four years, you have been the representative of ENI in Brussels. And uh, I have to say that this is not the first event where ENI is a, a guest speaker at on BRAC events. We did some events together um, as well. I also wrote some articles about ENI decarbonization strategy. And I have to say that I, I'm not prob probably allowed to say such things, but ENI is really my favorite <laughs> company, energy company, because they're always very um, open for discussion. You always have a position and you are ready to share it, but you are also taking a leading position in decarbonization. You're not waiting to be told to do something. You decided that you're going to align with European policies in this field on a global scale, and you're doing this. And you're also doing this in, um, in Central Asia because you have a goal to increase uh, renewable energy production from one gigawatt to 60, if, if I'm uh, correct, globally until 2050. And I know that uh, your CEO, um, uh, Claudio Descalzi, yes, met with the uh, president of Kazakhstan last month. Uh, so maybe you can tell us all the, all the details from this meeting. <laughs> I'm joking. Maybe you can tell us what are your projects and plans for Kazakhstan. Thank you very much, Adejda. And yes, it's really a pleasure to, to be here today because any, as Adejda said, has history in Central Asia and also some good developments to share concerning Kazakhstan. Um, actually, we were we have been present and active in Kazakhstan since 1992, uh, carrying out mainly activities in the exploration and production field, so oil and gas. Um, just to give you a figure, our annual uh, hydrocarbon production in Kazakhstan uh, totaled 46 million of uh, uh, barrels of oil equivalent in, uh, in 2022. So we are a major player in, in upstream in that country. But when it comes to renewables, uh, Kazakhstan is really a special country uh, to us because uh, uh, Kazakhstan is where we, we had the uh, we built the very first uh, large scale wind power project. And that was following uh, an MOU signed in 2017. And then we took the decision in, in 2018, uh, the, a year later, uh, to build uh, the, the Badam Shah phase one uh, uh, wind plant, uh, 48 megawatts. Badam Shah is located in the north western part of, of the country in the October uh, region. Uh, when, when that first investment decision was made, uh, I mean, Badam Shah phase one plant meant to increase uh, the renewable uh, or the wind uh, capacity of the country by 25%. So it meant a lot back then. Then, after that uh, investment decision, uh, more projects came in. Um, we were awarded uh, a further 48 megawatts. That was Badam Shah phase two. So still a, a, wind, a wind project through, that was done under auctions managed by the government of Kazakhstan. And then uh, there was a 50 megawatt uh, solar power plant which has been which is about to be built in the southern part of the country in the region of Turkestan. So currently we both our wind farms, so Badam Shah one and two are producing. Uh, they started producing respectively in September 21 and September 22, while the shoulder uh, uh, solar plant uh, will come to production by the end by the end of this year. Uh, this means that all together we are producing, uh, as of today, 96 megawatts with 50 additional megawatts now under construction. Um, we have a specific company dealing with renewables in Kazakhstan, which is called Arm Wind. Um, Arm Wind is a subsidiary of Plenitude. Plenitude is fully controlled by any, and it's our uh, uh, power generation, retail, uh, a company in both gas and, and, and power. 
So we, we have a fully controlled subsidiary there. Um, Kazakhstan makes up 8% uh, of uh, our renewable installed capacity. So it's, 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 uh, it's significant. And these are not, uh, how to say, small, uh, small numbers. And, and these numbers, these figures are, are a testimony of uh, a sound strategy uh, to invest in a strategic way in the country, but also to promote the decarbonization in, of, of Kazakhstan and to develop uh, the, the, the potential of uh, domestic resources. And then coming to uh, the more recent developments, as Nadezhda mentioned, last month, President Tokayev met with uh, our CEO, Claudio Descalzi, in Astana. And, and together with uh, KMG, we, we announced uh, a new project, a 250 megawatt hybrid project. It's renewable gas power uh, plant which will be built in Zanawen in Mangistau region. Uh, this hybrid project will combine uh, 50 megawatts of solar power plant, 77 megawatts of wind power plant, and 120 megawatts gas to power. All this will supply KMG subsidiaries in the area with low carbon and stable uh, energy electricity, actually. Uh, we are working now with the objective of reaching FID uh, by, by the end of, uh, of this year. Uh, a few comments on, on this new project because it's a, a very uh, innovative one, um, being an hybrid <laughs> project. Of course, it's both, uh, uh, it's technically uh, challenging. It's not only innovative, but also challenging. And, uh, but also it illustrates somehow uh, our approach to decarbonization, uh, both uh, as a company, because we have to realize our own net zero objectives by 2050, but also as a partner of, uh, of uh, Kazakhstan, uh, like other hydrocarbon producing countries, where we have embarked in this decarbonization process, supporting uh, those governments in their own uh, trajectory. The specific, the distinctive feature of our approach is to leverage all available technologies being able to decarbonize. There is no one way direction. Um, maybe an additional final comment on this project uh, to, to underline uh, its main aspects. But first of all, it lowers the, the carbon footprint of the oil and gas assets of the region of Mangistau. Um, so guaranteeing a, a more sustainable uh, production there. It also ensures the stability uh, of the electricity grid. Electricity grid has been often mentioned during the conference, which is a topic that is very relevant also to us. So, I mean, ensuring or improving the stability of the electricity grid in a, in a competitive uh, way. And that's a key element in order to be able to integrate more renewables in, into the grid. And then, and then last point, I would say, uh, by integrating more renewables in the energy mix of the country, it makes uh, another step in our track record in, in the area. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Luca. And to continue um, discussion about this, how do you see that the country, Kazakhstan, continuing to support uh, renewable development? Yeah, I mean, the, the progress we are making in developing renewables uh, um, shows that Kazakhstan is serious about, uh, about all this. Um, and I think that what was going on in Kazakhstan in the field of renewables is also a message to the entire region, uh, to, to the whole Central Asian region. Um, and all this is also relevant because of the energy relationships between the EU and Central Asia. Because, I mean, Central Asia is becoming more and more uh, relevant also uh, for the EU in this, in this energy transition. Um, the, the regulatory framework in Kazakhstan is once again, developing, <laughs> um, so it's undergoing uh, um, developments. 
and those developments, of course, will will have the impact an impact on 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 business and on further uh, renewable uh, development in the country. Um, there was in May a, a recent announcement of uh, a five-year auction schedule uh, for renewables for 2023 2027 with a total uh, auction capacity of six i think 0.8 gigawatts announced in terms of auction so i mean that there is a lot a lot to do um coming into the specific now uh, there are maybe a few points uh, i would like to to underline um, from of course the point of view of an energy company that in this field is a renewable developer mainly um first of all and this has been mentioned already by many speakers before me but it's important to underline investments in the electricity grid infrastructure is essential <laughs> absolutely is crucial to integrate more <laughs> renewables so those investments have to continue and they, they need to be devoted uh, a specific uh, uh, attention. Then another issue that has been already mentioned is uh, cross-border integration, so regional cooperation. I mean, cross-border integration with uh, neighboring countries agreed will enable uh, more effective use of renewables, electricity, while the, the, it will also enhance the, the stability uh, of the grid through diversification. So again, regional cooperation, nothing new. You have heard this already before, but it's important that additional voices uh, come Absolutely. in on this. Then coming to the regulatory uh, framework, um, we, we do believe that uh, it's important to attract solid, strong candidates uh, to auctions. So you need candidates that will be able to deliver on on the offer they submit uh, and on the offer they win. Um, so probably uh, greater attention to the uh, to solidity and strength of uh, of those candidates. Then, as everywhere else, we need stability of the rules uh, in, in order to attract investment. I mean. We would not like to see any retroactive uh, changes. So we can have a, a negative impact on on uh, investment confidence, but also we we need uh, uh, the development of a strong framework for corporate PPAs. Um, stability of uh, the regulation and development of corporate PPAs are both key elements to promote the development of sustainable industrial um, operations mm -hmm. um, last point just to let you know i mean together with other members of solar power europe so power europe being the um the solar pv uh, industry european industry association we are a member of it we we are developing within solar power europe uh, a, a comprehensive market uh, a report on kazakhstan um of course, devoted to uh, solar power and solar opportunities in the country. And in that report, which is in the making, so it will be issued uh, in the coming months, um, we, we are trying to develop uh, a constructive uh, approach with some recommendations uh, on, on, on what to do. And But the fact, the very fact that this report is being prepared and then is a part of it, it's again uh, a testimony of the attention we are, we are paying to the country and its future.